Good day everyone. Let's talk about pumping system using float level switch. This design can be used in a commercial application, high-rise buildings, and industrial plants. This system has two main devices like PLC and HMI. The program code is designed using TIA Portal version 15 software. Before I begin, I know most of you will not be able to relate and understand what I am about to say. This video is for those interested in industrial controls and modern automation we have today. In PLC programming, creating code is easy, but completing the code is difficult when you don't understand the sequence you want to do in your program. How this system works. Step 1. Select number of pumps for your application. Minimum is 1, maximum is 4. By default 4 is the primary value. 1 to 2 pumps system usually for commercial application. 3 to 4 pumps system usually for high rise building and industrial plant. Step 2. Select the type of switches you want to use for your application. This pumping system has the option that you can use the PLC even without the HMI screen. By default PLC is the primary option. Initial startup of the program, PLC is the priority. If you choose HMI, it will disable the function of PLC input selector switches without affecting the normal operation of the automatic mode. If you choose PLC, it will disable the function of HMI selector switches without affecting the normal operation of the automatic mode. Step 3. Select the pump status condition. There are three possible status condition of the pump. Such as operational, spare, and under repair. By default operational is the primary option. If you choose operational, the pump status condition is fully operational. If you choose spare, the pump is spare for operation. It will disable the pump control. If you choose under repair, the pump is not in good condition. It will disable the pump control and alarm. Step 4. Press the control on button to start the system. Press the stop button to stop the system. Step 5. Press the auto manual switch for automatic and manual operation mode. For manual operation mode, this mode is designed for testing and maintenance, not for normal operation. If you are using HMI switch, there are individual separate switches to enable the pump. Turn on enable switch to energize the pump. Turn on another switch will automatically deactivate the previous pump. Running the pumps at the same time is not possible for safety reasons. How automatic operation mode works in this system. Turn on the switch of the pumps you want to run for operation. Minimum of 1, maximum is 4. The sequence of the pump starts from left to right. Disable the pump will no longer part of the sequence. Example if pump 1 switch is off, the first enable switch is the second pump, the second enable switch is the third pump, followed by the third enable switch which is pump 4. The first motor to run is the first enable switch. The next motor to run is the second enable switch followed by the third and fourth switch. When the tank is empty, low level float switch will activate, the first enable pump will energize and fill the tank. When the water level goes up and reaches the high level float switch, the pump stop on filling the tank. When the tank is empty again, low level float switch will activate, the second enable pump will energize and fill the tank. When the water level goes up and reaches again the high level float switch, the pump stop on filling the tank. When the tank is empty again, low level float switch will activate, the third enable pump will energize and fill the tank. When the water level goes up and reaches again the high level float switch, the pump stop on filling the tank. When the tank is empty again, low level float switch will activate, 
The fourth enable pump will energize and fill the tank. When the water level goes up and reaches again the high level float switch, the pump stop on filling the tank. Cycle is repeated. Step 6, when a fault occurs such as thermal overload trip, the pump stops. HMI switch will trip and HMI pump will flashing red. The fault code will be displayed in the alarm view of the HMI. When a fault occurs, the pump stops, and it automatically jumps to the next enable pump to continue operation. If you are still unlucky and the next pump also trips, it will automatically shut off the pump and turns on the next pump to continue the process. The switch position also changed to prevent from restarting the pump control. During troubleshooting that would be really good source of information to quickly identify the problem of the equipment. Let's proceed to the next screen. This is an input and output wiring connection of the pumping system. Reminder, this is just an example, it is not the exact block diagram and terminal assignment of the module. Always check the original manufacturer manual. This is the input module of the PLC, and output module of the PLC. This is the input module addresses and output addresses. Both the input and output modules require a 24 volt DC power source to operate. This is the positive line. And this is the negative line from the power supply. If you notice there are optional devices indicates here. This pumping system can still be used even without the HMI screen, but you must install the optional devices needed to operate this system. The first channel with the input address of I0.0 is connected in series to the normally closed contacts of the emergency off buttons. This channel connected to normally closed contacts of stop push button. and normally open contacts of the control on button. This channel connected to the normally open contacts of the auto manual switch. If you decided not to use HMI screen, by switching this auto manual selector switch here, it will disable selector switches of the HMI and some buttons. I0.4 connected to the normally close contact of the high level float switch of the tank. I0.5 connected to the normally close contact of the low level float switch of the tank. Enable switch of pump 1. Pump 2. Pump 3. And pump 4. Connected to the normally open contact of the switch. This line conductor is connected in series to the normally close auxiliary contact of the circuit breaker and thermal overload. These are the motor protection of pump 1. and the remaining are the motor protection for pump 2, pump 3, and pump 4. Let's take a look of the output module side of the PLC. The first output channel connected to the positive terminal of the indicator light. The second, third, fourth, and fifth channel connected to the positive terminal of the magnetic contactors for pump motor number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Another light indicators for motor fault trip that connected to a positive line for pump 1, pump 2, pump 3, and pump 4. These are a very useful lighting indicators to quickly identify the problem of the motor when fault occurs. Let's deactivate the switch of pump number 2, and restart again the sequence by pressing the control on off of the PLC. When the tank is empty, low level float switch will activate. The first enable pump will energize and fill the tank. When the water level goes up and reaches the high level float switch, the pump stop on filling the tank. When the tank is empty again, low level float switch will activate, the second enable pump will energize and fill the tank. When the water level goes up and reaches again the high level float switch, the pump stop on filling the tank. When the tank is empty again, 
Low-level float switch will activate. The third enable pump will energize and fill the tank. When the water level goes up and reaches again the high-level float switch, the pump stop on filling the tank. Cycle is repeated. Now the water goes up and reaches again the high-level float switch. When fault occurs in the pump, the pump stops, and it will automatically jumps to the next enable pump to continue the process. I hope you learn something new today. Thank you for watching.